contingent status and pending status, right? You're cruising Zillow, Realtor.com, the MLS directly. Maybe you even driving down the street and uh, you see some overly active real estate folks putting signs on their for sale signs to say things like contingent and pending, right? What is the difference between these two statuses, right? Are they the same? Are they different? What's going on? That's what we're going to unpack today. In theory, they are actually very different, but in practice, not so much. Let's talk. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and I am here to help you guys unpack the real estate industry, right? Lots of people trying to get into real estate, right? They say it is the number one maker of self-made entrepreneurs, all right? Of all the people who become self-made millionaires, more people do so with the real estate industry than any other industry. That's not to say you can't become a millionaire doing other stuff, right? Pretty sure if you're going to become a billionaire, the tech industry uh, is the way to go. But folks, there's only a freaking handful of tech billionaires. But you know what? There is a lot of real estate millionaires. So if we're looking from a practical standpoint, real estate makes a lot of sense. That's why a lot of people are into it. That's why a lot of people have a lot of questions. And that's why I help break some of it down. Now, uh, this dude right here just watched the video we put out on Holden Weiss TV the other day. And uh, his question was, thanks for this, very helpful, what's contingent versus pending? And I was like, oh, man, that's a pretty cool question, actually, uh, because it's actually not the simplest thing to answer. By the way, video he saw that uh, you guys might want to check out, uh, 25 real estate terms and what they really mean, hidden meanings exposed, ask James Wise 62, right? I was going over a lot of the terms in the business, and that's what prompted his question, right? What's contingent versus pending? And the reason I bring up that other video uh, in this topic is because it all kind of coincides, kind of goes together, right? Because in that video I talked about, like, there's a lot of terms in the real estate industry that have, like, hidden meanings or they don't mean exactly what they, they, they say, right? For instance, buyer's agent represents the buyer. Listing agent represents the seller, but then you have seller's agent or the selling agent, right? You have selling agent and seller's agent, right? So I think we all know buyer's agent represents the buyer. Listing agent represents the seller. Seller's agent represents the seller, but selling agent represents the buyer, right? Stuff like that. It's confusing, right? So with this question, I thought it was good, right? Contingent and pending. And in theory... There is a difference between the contingent status or the pending status, right? When a real estate person puts a property online on the MLS, you'll see it on Zillow, you'll see it on Realtor.com, the status is going to be active. That means, hey, yo, it's available, it's ready for sale. Y'all come buy this some bitch, right? That's what that means, okay? But then you have these other statuses. You have contingent, and then you have pending, and then you have closed or sold. Closed and sold, simple, right? It's a done deal. That's all she wrote. Money's been exchanged. Title's been exchanged. But the two in the middle, that's where things get a little murky. Contingent and pending. Now, in theory, they are supposed to mean something different. In theory, contingent means the property has gone under contract. That means a buyer is like, hey, I want to buy 123 Main Street for $100,000, but my offer, it's not as is. It is contingent. On some other things. Most commonly, that would be an inspection. So, in theory, the idea is when you see a property being contingent, it may close, right? But there's some hurdles in the way that we have to get to. And then, in theory, after the buyer removes that contingency, usually it's an inspection contingency, a real estate professional would then move the status to pending, meaning Hey, man, the dust is settled. There's no more contingencies. This just hasn't closed yet, but it's going to, right? So in theory, contingent means supposed to close, contingent on a few things happening. Pending means everything that has happened uh, has already been taken care of. This will close, just not yet. But you see, 
in practice, it doesn't really work that way, guys. In practice, this in practice, the deal ain't closed till it's closed. In practice, the deal ain't closed till the money's transferred, till title's been transferred, right? So you get people, I think they're getting a little too caught up in this contingent versus pending stuff, right? Because, like, you'll get people... They'll see a property that's under contract, contingent on inspection. Then the buyer's going to go in. They're going to remove inspection contingencies. And then someone's like, all right, now we're moving to pending. It's the same thing, dude. At the end of the day, for a deal to go through, the buyer's got to still want to buy it. Seller's got to still want to sell it. You don't know how many times in my years of selling real estate have I seen people back out when there's no contractual contingencies left, right? That's why things like earnest money are important, right? They're supposed to hold people to the contract, hold people to the deal, right? You'll hear people talk about like, oh, if a buyer doesn't perform on a contract or a seller doesn't perform on a contract that no longer has contingencies, you could just sue them for cause. Okay, sure. You could totally sue people for cause, bro. I get this question all the time. People are like, yo, can I sue for this? Can I sue for that? Can I sue for this? This is the United States of America. You can sue for anything. It doesn't matter. There's no rule. You could file a lawsuit. I could file a lawsuit right now alleging Ronald McDonald tickled my nuts when I was seven. Okay, I could do that. Nothing's stopping me from filing that lawsuit today, even though Ronald McDonald isn't a real human being. I could do that. This is America. But the real question is, does it make sense to do that? Do I have a relative probability of winning? No, because I made the entire thing up off the top of my head right now as I'm speaking to you. Will it be worth it for me financially, right? Lawsuits are incredibly expensive. So what I'm trying to get at, folks, is if you have a buyer or a seller back out of the sale of a contract, typically it is cost and effort prohibitive to ever try to file a lawsuit. At the end of the day, buyers got to want to buy, sellers got to want to sell. So contingent and pending in the real world, it's the same thing. Until the deal's done, it ain't done, right? And usually... Uh, we collect earnest money, so if somebody does not perform on the contract, that is a little bit of reprieve for the other party uh, who is, you know, victim of their not doing it, right? To be honest with you, some MLSs, right, like the actual the MLS that I'm a part of, right? By the way, MLS folks, there's a whole ton of them, right? Every state's got many, 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 right? That's where realtors list and sell properties and offer cooperating commissions to each other uh, for the process of... Uh, helping either or buy and sell these properties, right? But the MLS I'm uh, a part of, we actually used to have active status, contingent status, pending status, and then closed status. But the MLS that I'm a part of, we actually don't even have that anymore. We got rid of it. Uh, they now switched it to contingent allowing showings and then contingent not allowing showings because I think they came to the realization like everybody else, like, yo, pending is still the same darn thing, man. The deal ain't done till the money's transferred, right? So don't get caught up in seeing a property out there somewhere on an MLS that says, oh, this is just this one's just contingent or this one's pending. Oh, if this one's just contingent, I'll try to make my backup offer. But this one's pending, so I won't make my backup offer. If you want to make a backup offer, folks, whether you see it out there saying contingent or pending, go ahead, shoot your shot, right? Uh, they both, in my opinion, in the real world, having sold $200 million worth of real estate, have the same level of probability uh, actually getting to the closing table, right? Uh, it is more or less splitting hairs on the difference of what these two statuses are in practice. In theory, I explain the differences, but in practices, folks, it is basically the same thing. Buyer and seller have agreed to do a deal, but it ain't done till the fat lady sings. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.